The craziest part about this is that as a photographer, for the first time I'm questioning, do I actually need to take my real camera when I go on a photo shoot? Let's check it out. What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside this video, we're gonna take a look at Apple's brand new iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro announcement. Whether or not it's time for you to upgrade as a photographer and exactly what it means for you when it comes to creating your work. So let's take a look and see what they've announced. Okay. All right. That's cool. Let's keep Both going. Both models have the gorgeous Super Retina XDR display with OLED technology that supports 1200 nits peak. Okay, I'm legit excited about this. Basically what they're saying is that 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and 1200 nits of brightness means you can actually see your phone when you're outside, sunny day, you're shooting, you're taking an Instagram shot, whatever it is, getting one of those banger reels for your social you can legit see what's going on, no matter how bright it is. Like this is gonna be a big deal and a really huge help when you're out on a shoot and you wanna actually see and like take a photo or just work. Like if you wanna be able to text somebody and see what your phone says, helpful. Peak HDR brightness, two million to one contrast ratio and Dolby Vision. iPhone 14 is designed to last, so you can count on it to be there for you. Okay. Both models have ceramic shield, tougher than any smartphone glass, Okay. Aerospace grade aluminum and water and Okay, now here's the problem. Yes, you have a ceramic shield, but for fourteen hundred dollars, I don't feel like I can trust you. Or why would I? <laughs> I think I'm still gonna be using the same cover, but that's great. Dust resistance. They come in five gorgeous colors. Midnight, starlight, a great new shape. Okay, can we just ask ourselves like why exactly we don't have just a normal white? Native of blue, a strikingly elegant purple, and a truly eye-catching product red. Strikingly elegant. Users depend on their iPhone product for so red. many things. <laughs> I would like the product red iPhone, please. I don't want a red one. I want product red. Which is why I... I want to feel like a consumer buying a product. iPhone 14 delivers all-day battery life. I... I mean, that's pretty good, but I already get all-day battery life. How about two day battery life? Like that would be a phone a legit... 14 plus lasts even longer throughout your day with the best battery life ever in an iPhone. Well, I would hope so. It is a year later. The larger display and best battery life were previously only available in our Pro Max models. And now we're bringing it to even more people. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about performance. iPhone 13 Pro introduced an amazing chip the A15 Bionic with a five core GPU. Now that's true, it's it really was a big deal. It's a powerhouse that unlocks extraordinary features and delivers great power efficiency, privacy, and security. So this is the reason I'm so hyped on Apple at the moment. Previously they had good products, but now that they're creating their own chips, that means they can do faster things and they can have a lot better battery life. We've seen that with the M1 Max and how much of a game changer that's been for photographers in particular, video editors, creators, because you can run something that actually uses your computer, your laptop, whatever, and it doesn't drain the battery in like an hour. So I'm excited about this new chip. Now we are bringing this proven pro level performance to iPhone 14. Okay. The five core GPU is 18% faster, enabling even smoother graphics in computationally heavy workloads like complex gaming. Okay, I don't know who is doing complex gaming on their iPhone, but good for you. Uh, you're not really going to notice this so much with your photos. It but has a powerful six core CPU with two high performance and four efficiency cores and a 16 core neural engine that pushes the limits of machine learning. So where I see this actually being really advantageous is as we get more and more filters and like you've got programs that can then analyze things and put them into 3D space. Like if you're an animator, that could be really cool. You could just take a scan of someone's face and your phone is like, okay, here you go. Here's a 3D render. And then you can grab that, import it into your stuff for video games, whatever it is. Like that's going to be really cool. If you're also doing more and more video editing, like I can see if they had the capacity to connect an iPhone to an external display, you could literally take your iPhone and say like a little iPad and use the iPhone to just power it and do real work. So maybe. Since its introduction, A15 continues to be faster than all the competition at any price. A15 is essential to iPhone 14. And with the custom image signal process. How much do you think it irks them that it's the A15 for the iPhone 14? Like, it's so close, guys. Maybe we should just skip to the iPhone 15. I wonder if they legit were like, maybe we should just 
Skip one. Processor. A15 also powers innovative features in the amazing new camera system. Here's Karen to tell you more. <laughs> oh no, Karen. iPhone is always with you and ready to quickly and effortlessly capture your life's moments. Last year, over three trillion photos were taken with iPhone. We develop unique, state-of-the-art camera technology while staying true to the craft of photography. Lighting is a fundamental part of getting the best shot possible. True. It plays such an important role in capturing everyday memories and jaw-dropping moments. iPhone enables gorgeous photo capture across the entire range of light. From bright light, where colors come alive, to low light, like indoors, to nighttime scenes. And iPhone 14, again, sets the standard for photo and video capture, regardless of where you are. I mean, I think the, ca <laughs> the capture standard is like real cameras, but okay, you can say iPhone set the, st set the standard. It has a new 12 megapixel main camera with a larger sensor and larger pixels at 1.9 microns. Okay. I don't really know exactly what the microns is, but the larger sensor basically is gonna make it better in low light, like much, much, much better. That's why full frame cameras, you can get such great shots at night. It's because you have a larger sensor and more pixels. So more pixels, more sensor, you can then compress it down, make it smaller, and your end image is just a lot less grainy, okay? So that's why this matters, it's gonna be a big deal. It has a faster f1.5 aperture and sensor shift OIS for a powerful main camera upgrade and takes stunning shots everywhere. That's awesome. The faster aperture allows better motion freezing, showing off vibrant colors that bring the scene to- Okay, I have no idea why a faster aperture would allow for better motion freezing. Like, what am I missing here? Because motion freezing is just shutter speed, like that's it. So if your aperture is faster, that means that your shutter speed has to go higher, I guess. So there's, in, in low light, sure. In low light, your aperture can be wide open, you let more light in, so your shutter speed can be higher. Okay, that's what they're saying. But most of the time when you're shooting during the day, it's gonna make zero difference for to that. life with great texture and detail. It delivers a 49% in- Okay, this is amazing because we all know that low light is like the worst part about a phone camera. They're great during the day, honestly, almost comparable to an A7 III or whatever kind of pro level camera you're using. But low light, that's where they fall apart. So this is like massive. Improvement in low light capture for more vibrant color and better results in challenging lighting environments while making night mode exposure twice as fast. And the ultra wide camera takes incredible looking photos and video. Okay, I have no idea how it would make night mode exposure twice as fast other than having the larger aperture, which theoretically, if you're letting twice as much light in, then obviously you only have to capture it for half the time. Twice the light, half the exposure time. That's kind of what I think they're saying. iPhone kind of dumbs things down sometimes, so you're like, not even sure. Which is Apple, great for wider shots and unique perspectives. Okay. The front camera enables great looking selfies, high quality video during FaceTime, and so much more. <laughs> iPhone okay. 14 has a new true depth camera. It has a faster F1.9 aperture. That's impressive. For a 38% improvement in low light capture for photos mm. and video. Okay, because the front facing camera, let's be honest, it's really bad. The new front camera has autofocus for the first time, so it can focus clearly at multiple distances. Okay. Together with true depth capabilities, the new front camera now has a hybrid system that can focus faster, even in low light. So you'll get better selfies, group shots can be in focus from farther away, and you'll be able to show off great detail up close. Low light environments okay. can be a unique like challenge with photography. We've made incredible progress in capturing in low light over the years, with increasingly larger sensors and faster apertures. True. More advanced lenses. True. All paired with intelligence. Although faster apertures and more advanced lenses is like saying the same thing twice, just saying. Software and our powerful Apple Silicon Both that results awesome. in incredible capabilities for low light. Deep Fusion is a great example. 
It's a huge achievement in computational photography and uses the powerful neural engine to combine multiple frames into a single image. Okay, so we would just normally call this bracketing in one of these cameras. Like you'll have a menu setting called bracketing. It'll take multiple photos. It'll take one that's overexposed, that'll grab the shadows. It'll grab one that's underexposed, that'll make sure your sky gets recovered. And it'll grab one at a normal exposure that's kind of for your skin tones, your mid tones, and then it will combine it together. So this is nothing new, but the fact that your iPhone is doing it on every shot, and it's probably doing it with like five different images and compressing them together and doing kind of the thinking for you, that is nice. This delivers extraordinary detail and preserves even the subtlest textures in these mid to lower light environments. Okay, I don't exactly know exactly, I don't exactly know exactly. Yes, you're preserving detail in the sense that you're not blowing out your highlights and you're not like losing your shadows because they just go black, but you're not actually like getting more texture. You're just not losing it in the first place, if that makes sense. Now, we are taking our image pipeline further by applying deep fusion much earlier in the process on uncompressed images. This retains much more information in detail and enables rendering of more colors and brighter colors. Okay, so previously, I guess, the way that the iPhone would work is it would bracket the shots. It would take one over, under, and medium exposure, and then it would export those to JPEG, kind of, and then it would combine the JPEGs together. So what happens is you have three compressed images that are all smooshed together. So it's like you take a big loaf of Wonder Bread, right? You have three, three loaves. One is undercooked, one is cooked okay, and one is way overcooked. And then you squish them all down, and then you mash them together. That's what they were doing before. Now you have three Wonder Loaf breads that don't get squished before they get pushed, put together. So, I mean, that analogy doesn't make much sense, but <laughs> it's, it's better. This new process unlocks our biggest step forward yet for low light performance. We call it Photonic Engine. Okay. This is our enhanced image pipeline that dramatically improves low light photos. Now I'm sure it's doing more it than just what It goes beyond what hardware alone can provide. The best part is that it benefits every camera. When compared to iPhone 13, it enables photo low light improvement up to two times on the front camera. Up to two, two times, times How do you measure on that? the ultra wide camera. And two and a half times on the new main camera. Like if it's truly two and a half times better than the last camera, and let's be honest, the iPhone 13 was an amazing camera. It's great. You can literally sub it out with one of these in good lighting conditions and you wouldn't know the difference if you're using the same lens, same composure, same everything. Like it's that good. However, two and a half times better, like that is mind bogglingly a massive improvement. You'll get photos with much better detail and color. Because this is exactly the kind of photo you couldn't have taken before and gotten the great results because you've got such dark shadows happening and then you've also got such bright highlights that at the end of the day, you're going to lose something in there. Now, even a normal DSLR is going to do that as well. But the fact that now you're bracketing your images inside of the phone and that's being taken care of by software, it's going to save you a lot of time, first off, whereas this, you'd have to work a lot harder and it's just going to do a much better job. So you can now use your iPhone in more places and have it look good instead of just in great lighting conditions. That's, that's my hope. Helping you remember the moment, the way you lived it. There's also a big improvement to video this year. iPhone leads the industry with the highest quality video and has great stabilization. It now has a new, even more advanced stabilization mode that gives users a powerful... Okay, I would say that iPhone has okay stabilization. If you compare it to something like the GoPro or the DJI uh, action cameras, where like you can literally run and it looks like you're on a dolly almost, the iPhone is not near that. At least the iPhone 13 was not. But possibly the 14 is going to learn from what these guys have been doing. I don't know. Tool when capturing moments on the move. This is action mode. Action. It uses the full sensor with more okay. overscan and advanced roll correction uh -huh. to make video look incredibly stable when you're in the middle of the action. Okay, that is amazing. Simply toggle it on for great looking smooth video. All right. Like I'm... I'm so stoked on this because as a creator, as a photographer, most of the photography work I do with clients, it's still going to be one of these. It's a lot faster to use. You get better images. You get raw files. I know the workflow. I've got different lenses. It's just amazing. It's going to be really hard for a phone to actually catch this. But when it comes to behind the scenes content, reels, drama, or just, hey, I don't have my camera right now, but man, that'll be a cool shot. The fact that you can do that, like that is no more, no more gimbals. 
required i can just run and it looks amazing like whoa goodbye gopro without having to carry extra gear like mm -hmm. a gimbal it also supports Dolby Vision HDR. Don't know what that is. New iPhone 14 camera system is a huge upgrade, mm -hmm. enabling incredible looking shots across the entire range of shooting conditions. Okay, this is amazing. Two and a half Back times better you, low Kai. light. Stabilization like you wouldn't even believe it. Like, whoa, I'm ready. Now I'm so let's ready. talk about connectivity. Connectivity. iPhone has powerful capabilities that help our users stay in touch. Okay, we're gonna skip go. ahead to the pro. I'm excited to share our most innovative pro mm. lineup yet. Yes. Yes, Tim, yes. Okay, cool. We got rid of the notch, yeah. To tell you more about the new iPhone 14 Pro, Here's Jaws. Yeah, Jaws. Let's go. On okay, surgical Jaws. grade stainless steel, together with our industry leading durability features, including ceramic shield and okay. water resistance. Same as the other one. They come in four gorgeous colors. Mm -hmm. A new space black, silver, gold, and this all new deep purple. What's up with the purple? iPhone 14 Pro introduces I mean, a new front cool, design that is sure purple? to become iconic. At least there's no I'm product excited to share our no. most innovative. We lost our spot. Okay, back to Jaws. Here we go. They come in four gorgeous colors. We got that. We got the that colors. Is sure to become iconic. It starts with the new True Depth camera. We redesigned all components to fit into a smaller size, mm -hmm. using 30% less area. We put the proximity sensor behind the display for the first time. That's actually so with crazy this change, when you're talking about how we small it is. We reconsidered how you interact with your iPhone. Mm -hmm. Throughout the day, you experience different types of alerts and notifications. Okay, this is cool, but we want these the camera stuff. These are often happening. The interactive. So we lost the notch. Great. iPhone 14 Pro has a stunning okay, display with Pro features. This is the most advanced display we've ever shipped. Makes sense. iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max come in two great sizes. Okay. Now with even thinner borders, more active area, and a dynamic island. Okay. It is also brighter. The new display provides peak HDR brightness of 1600 nits, bringing iPhone to the same level. Okay, so the 14 is 1400 nits, and this one's 1600 nits. So what is that, like a 20% improvement? It's less than that, but it's brighter. As the Pro Display XDR. So photos and HDR movies are going to look amazing. Okay, but more importantly, your content, when you're actually taking the photo, you can see what the exposure looks like, you can see what's going on, like that's that's the real, where it's going to be. Including those you shoot on your iPhone. And for those bright sunny days, iPhone can now push brightness even higher for a peak of 2000 nits. Okay, that's impressive. That's twice as bright as before and the highest peak brightness of any smartphone. That's massive. The new lock screen in iOS 16 introduces more okay, personal care about that. important areas. Power right. efficiency, display, and camera. Delivering it. Okay, so the 14 Pro has the A16 chip, whereas the other one is the A15, and I think it's just like a tweet chip. chip. This one has a brand new chip. Incredible performance with leading power efficiency is a hallmark of Apple Silicon. Mm -hmm. A16 has nearly 16 billion transistors, the most ever in an iPhone. I mean, this I don't know tech, but that sounds cool. This is our first chip built on a state-of-the-art four nanometer process, 16 enabling greater efficiency while delivering even more performance. In fact, A16 Bionic is the fastest chip ever in a smartphone. That's cool. The competition is still working to catch up with the performance of A13, which we first introduced with iPhone 11 three years ago. The new six-core CPU of A16 is generations ahead. It's up to a whopping 40% faster than the competition. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I never noticed that my phone is slow, but I never use my phone for the kind of stuff. Maybe I would if it could do more, so I'm excited. The CPU uses our best-in-class Fusion architecture, mm -hmm. which delivers both leading performance and leading efficiency. Our two high-performance cores are faster and use 20% lower power compared to the A15 Bionic. Okay. And most daily tasks can be handled by our high-efficiency cores. At the same performance level, these new efficiency cores use one-third the power of even the best efficiency cores from the competition. 
Okay, so basically you've got like two big war elephants for like when you need to do beefy work, and then you've got like some little donkeys for when you got just day-to-day -day use. So that's why it uses less power, because you're using the donkeys instead of the elephants. They're not always on, it's whatever the phone needs. This allows iPhone to deliver One amazing battery life that's nice. while still being extremely responsive. The new 16-core neural engine is capable of nearly 17 trillion operations per second, which helps power iPhone's advanced computational photography. So and again, the 5 core AI GPU stuff has 50% more memory your bandwidth. Your photos. Great for graphic-intensive games. There's also an entirely new dis I like that the normal iPhone 14 is like, it's great for pro gamers. And this one, they're just like, it's great for intensive games. Apparently, the 14 is the gamer phone. The, the 14 Pro, that's not for gamers. Display engine in A16. This engine enables the one hertz refresh rate, always-on capability, higher peak brightness, and the advanced anti-aliasing that makes dynamic island animations so incredibly smooth. So always on is kind of cool. A16 also flexes every muscle for the iPhone 14 Pro camera system. Mm. It uses a CPU, GPU, neural engine, and ISP to perform up to four trillion operations per photo. Okay. And the image signal processor was designed to support a new generation of technology that provides our most powerful pro camera system ever. Okay. This empowers every user to take their best photos and videos, from the casual user to the professional. Hit me with the We're jaws. We're excited for iPhone 14 Pro to push the boundaries for what's possible and usher in a new era for iPhone photography. Me too. To tell you more, here's Vitor. Gotta keep it on and focus. Mm -hmm. Come on, Vitor. iPhone 14 Pro introduces a brand new... <laughs> I mean, like, I love Vitor. I just think it's funny that he happens to have this, like, very European accent. So it's like, he's trustworthy because Glass he's fancy. Of camera to iPhone. A 48 megapixel camera fancy. with a quad pixel sensor. Okay, okay. I need you to know something. The A7 III, I'm not 100% sure. The A7R two or three or whatever that's like a 12 megapixel camera this one i think is a 24 megapixel camera i know that my panasonic s5 is a 24 megapixel camera this might be a 36 but the bottom line is my professional camera has less megapixels than the new iphone camera like how insane is that and what is a megapixel it's just the amount of resolution the amount of literal pixels across the screen because every image is just made up of dots right so more megapixels means the smaller the dots are smaller when you actually make the image smaller to look at you can't see the dots anymore right and the more megapixels the larger you can blow it up as well and it affects the low light so if you've got noise going on if your pixels are just made smaller you shrink them down you hide the noise you get better low light it's our largest other cool stuff. sensor yet 65 percent larger than the one on iphone 13 pro Okay, like, whoa! I think that the other, the iPhone 14 is a 12 megapixel sensor. So this is four times larger than the normal 14. So the Pro is like, whoa! When it comes to photography, this is the one that you're like, okay. Features our second generation sensor shift OIS and 100... Okay, let's look at this. So we got quad pixel sensor. All right, don't know what that means. Nanometer pixel size. Smaller pixels, better low light, whatever. F1.78 aperture, that seems to be lower than the iPhone 14, but maybe I'm just not understanding. Oh, that's the main camera, so there's two different ones. Seven element lens, I don't know how that's an advantage or not an advantage, but basically what that means, there's like multiple little pieces of glass. Those are the elements within a lens, and they'll do different things. So one might be meant to get rid of glare, one might be to get better color accuracy, one might be to get better contrast, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's a very, the gist of it. That's why those elements are there. So maybe more just equals better. I don't know. 100% focus pixels. I'm assuming that means that it can focus across any pixel in the entire sensor. So old school cameras could just focus in like a very small area. It only had a few focusing pixels. This can find focus anywhere in the sensor. And second generation sensor shift OIS. That I don't really know. I'm assuming that that's just their stabilization on image stabilization, so. Percent focus pixels. Mm -hmm. It also features a new 24 millimeter focal length, popular okay. in photography for its versatility to shoot great landscapes, group portraits, even see. Okay, iPhone 13 main camera millimeter, 26. Okay, so it's a little bit wider than the older camera. So the iPhone 13 26 millimeter camera, the iPhone 14 24. So is that going to make a massive difference? No, but it's a little bit wider. 
single subjects. The quad pixel sensor enables a new flexible approach, which adapts to the photo you're shooting. For most photos, we want to optimize for light capture. Sure. So the new sensor groups every four pixels into one large quad pixel with four times more light. What? This further improves light capture while maintaining the practical 12 megapixel photo size. Okay, so what I'm assuming is happening here is you have four different pixels that can each register their own amount of light, right? But it's kind of like you could have four different images or we can overlay them all together and that's going to make much more bright because four combined into one, four Wonder Bread loaves squished together, one beautiful giant ball of Wonder Bread. Combined with the Photonic Engine, mm -hmm. the new main camera has up to two times low light improvement for photos compared to iPhone 13 Pro. And the 13 Let's Pro is amazing. Let's take a look at what the main camera like can do. compared to the 12. You can capture stunning photos across all lighting conditions. Mm -hmm. In this brighter shot, the main camera captured the beautiful, rich color of her skin, Whoop. the detail okay. of the fiber in the blanket, and even a little of her joy. For this photo, we locked exposure the on the woman's face. As the vibrant feathers fell, iPhone kept her in sharp focus while creating a colorful texture around her. In this low light example, the photonic engine captures incredible dynamic range from the warm glow of her skin, the color of her eyes, to every little crease, fold, and texture in the garment. I mean, that does look good. I don't like the edit. The new but... sensor can optimize for detail using each pixel individually, providing more creative options for shooting and editing Okay, so here's the massive thing, right? You can shoot in 48 megapixels and have this huge resolution photo. So you do that when you're shooting in like really great light because you want as much detail as possible and you can zoom in, you can just whatever. But when you're in low light, you can switch it or when you just don't want to have these massive files on your phone, you can switch it to automatically go into 12 megapixel mode and that will allow you to get better low light and save on file size because we all know that our phones get full. That's just the reality of how phones work. In pro workflows. There's never enough storage space. With this approach, we can go beyond the three fixed lenses of the pro camera system, adding a new 2x telephoto option for our users. We Okay, so this I kind of don't understand or don't appreciate the way they framed it. They're saying like, oh, now we can zoom in three times without it being digital zoom. But at the same time, like turning a 48 megapixel photo into a 12 megapixel photo just to get closer, you're still zooming in. You're just, I don't know, I just... We use the middle 12 megapixels of the new sensor to mm -hmm. deliver a full resolution photo in 4K video with optical quality. This telephoto has larger pixels. So like the video, it's still 4K, I get that. But at the end of the day, a 12 megapixel image is still a 12 megapixel image. So they're still zooming in and just cropping it. So I don't understand how that's not digital zoom. And a faster aperture than any previous 2X telephoto camera on Okay, so it's a 12 megapixel, two times telephoto, 1.78 aperture, 48 mil lens. Okay. iPhone, delivering incredible photos and videos. I like that. And it so has that's a familiar zoom, focal lens, lens that is great for portrait mode. It's true. Capturing stunning detail. 50 megapixels is like the go-to portrait lens, that and an 85. And the reason is just the way that it separates the subject from the background. It's kind of more flattering on the face. With a wider angle lens, you really exaggerate facial features. With a 50, you just start to compress it just a little bit. So this, this one right here is a 35, but most YouTubers, they're using really wide angle lenses and that's why everything looks really big and stretched out. Real estate photos do the same thing. But with a portrait, you don't want that. So having a 50 is actually really, really cool. Tail with beautiful bokeh. Mm -hmm. We're also using the new sensor just the to optimize for detail the in lights. Pro Raw. Pro Raw merges the best of our intelligent computational photography with the benefits of the raw format, mm -hmm. giving pro photographers full creative control over things like sharpening white balance in our advanced tone mapping with more bit depth and dynamic range. So this isn't anything new, 
that I'm aware of. They've been doing ProRes for a while, but maybe it's a slightly larger file size. Well, obviously, because it's 48 megapixel. So basically, you're going to have much more like this when it's shooting raw, you'll get from your camera right away, which is great. So you can edit it in post, do whatever you want. Your phone's not going to decide for you, and then you're just stuck with what it got. You're going to be able to adjust that later on. That's pretty cool. You can now shoot Pro Raw at 48 megapixel yeah, so resolution. Yes, that's the big upgrade. Taking advantage of every pixel in the main camera mm -hmm. and unlocking incredible editing flexibility. True. The new sensor has a different pixel pattern. So we designed a new machine learning model that further enhances detail she looks really and scary. reduces noise. This leverages the full power of A16 Bionic and results in an unprecedented level of detail. It's unbelievable how much we can zoom in, like in this ethereal photo in Hawaii, revealing each individual rock on the beach and even dry branches from the trees. Okay, so <laughs> I don't really like this example because I feel like it looks like they zoomed in and it just doesn't look that great. Like, look at our highlights. They're super blown out and our shadows are super clipped. I don't really get it for that example, but it is true what they're saying, like that massive megapixel difference is going to be awesome. You're going to be able to crop into your photos and not feel like you've just made a complete mess. So that's pretty awesome. With more pixels, pro photographers can reframe their photos while still retaining Called great it. resolution. Mm -hmm. We are able to keep the sharpness and warmth of her eyes as the focal point of this high resolution image. This makes the 48 megapixel main camera even more versatile, further empowering the creativity of... I don't know how it makes it more versatile. It's exactly the same amount of versatile as when you first said it was 48 megapixels, but they have redesigned the chip itself in the pixel sensor. So it's kind of like when Sony upgraded from the A7 one to the three or whatever, the color science got a lot better. So basically the actual colors, the way they were interpreted by the camera, that changed. And so this is happening on some level with the iPhone 14. It's not just capturing more data, it's capturing it differently. So you probably are going to get better or different interpretations of the same colors. Of the most pro users, iPhone 14 Pro also has a new ultra wide camera. Okay, what is this? It's a 13 millimeter. So typically like for landscape photography, widest you'd ever go is like a 16 millimeter. Sometimes where it's super, super handy to have that. This having that, pretty awesome. And it's a 2.2 aperture. So you can still do that in low light and get quite a bit of light into the sensor. Now it's 12 megapixels. It's not 48. So you are losing the abilities that you'd get with the 28 millimeter. But if, if you're in a situation where you just need to shoot wide, this is awesome. And if you really want super stable footage, I'm imagining this would be more stable than using the 48. But with the 48, they're going to be able to crop and do more things digitally. So we'll find out. With a larger sensor, more focus pixels, and together with the Photonic Engine, delivers a massive up to three times improvement. Okay, that's pretty sweet. And, and the macro feature is gonna be really cool. light capture for photos. The new lens is sharper with more detail. Mm -hmm. So macro gets even better. Like this Katie did bug capture. In like I have zero interest in bug photography, but as far as bugs go, that's a cool photo. In a split second to reveal more than was visible to the naked eye. That's true. The flash was completely redesigned for a new adapted behavior based on the focal length of the photo. With a right. new array of nine LEDs, we control... Okay, so the reason that you would do that is if you've got a really wide angle lens and it's seeing a lot, you're gonna have to have the flash spread out, right? Whereas if you have a very narrow lens, you're using the telephoto, the 50 mil, it's gonna be narrower. You're only gonna see, say, this much of me. Then you don't need the flash to do this. You just need the flash to do this. So you can concentrate the beam a little bit more. I think that's where they're going with this, which will be amazing. Oh, the pattern and intensity. So it's yeah. up to twice as bright with up to three times better uniformity compared mm -hmm. to our previous generation. And with the new photonic engine, all cameras of iPhone 14 Pro get a dramatic improvement in low light performance. Because it's taking multiple up photos. To two times better for the telephoto camera. Mm -hmm. Together with higher resolution photos and more creative options, this is our most powerful pro camera system ever. Okay. Now, back to Jaws. But tell me about the stabilization. 
Yeah, iPhone is already the choice for filmmakers because of its versatility. <laughs> okay, iPhone is not the choice for filmmakers. Film cameras and cameras are the choice for filmmakers. Everybody knows like all those videos where they have like iPhone versus $40,000 Red Epic. Okay, yeah, you got a great shot with the iPhone, but you also had $200,000 worth of stabilizers and it took you like five days to get this shot versus this just got it in two seconds. So that's the difference iPhone is still not the choice of filmmakers, but you know what? Given compared to like a Samsung phone or whatever else is out there, they're pretty great. However, when it comes to content creators, that definitely is where iPhone is amazing. And I think this is what's going to blow your mind. And cinema grade video. Mm -hmm. iPhone is the only smartphone to shoot in ProRes okay. and the only device in the world with an end to end workflow in Dolby Vision HDR. Mm -hmm. iPhone 14 Pro also has our new action mode for shooting videos with our best stabilization. And cinematic mode gets a great update. That looked pretty good. Now supporting up to 4K resolution and 30 frames per second for even more detail. Okay, so cinematic mode, the idea being that it's going to intelligently figure out what you're focusing on and make everything else in the background blurry. Like, it's cool. I don't know how practical it actually is. Most people are just gonna use this thing for reels and whatever, and that's where the stabilization is the big deal, but okay. Pro filmmakers can also choose to record in 4K at 24 frames per second, the mm -hmm. cinematic standard. Okay, so 24 frames a second, the whole theory is, that's kind of what your eye is used to seeing. Like real life sort of looks like 24 frames a second. It's the most realistic. Whereas sports photography and sports films, whatever, action films, are often filmed at 30 or more often 60 frames a second because all of a sudden there's less blurriness and everything feels more crisp and like right there and intense. So having the option to shoot in 24 is kind of cool. Is it actually a game changer gonna be big difference for most people? No, you're not gonna notice. This is the biggest leap ever for the iPhone camera. And we're continuing to raise the bar for our industry leading video quality. Mm -hmm. People count on iPhone throughout the day. So long battery life is incredibly important to our users. Wait, that's it? Even with industry leading performance, we're just skipping new over the camera system and always on display, iPhone 14 Pro delivers all day battery life. So that's iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. The dynamic island and always on display introduce new ways to experience iPhone. Powered by the A16 chip with the new 48 megapixel main camera, beautiful new finishes, crash detection, and emergency SOS via satellite. Okay, so let's just talk about this really, really briefly. Should you upgrade to the iPhone 14? If you're on the iPhone 13, the iPhone 12, whatever. I personally am rocking an iPhone 10, and you know what? It's been a great phone. It does pretty much everything I need, but where it doesn't work is when I need to get actual pro professional content. When I'm just trying to shoot a reel and it's early morning at a sunrise shoot, I can't use this phone. It just doesn't work. It's too dark. So I have to use a real camera. And then later on, I have to take that footage and edit it. And I, it's just, it's so much more work. <laughs> Whereas the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13, they're taking pretty good videos. Should you upgrade? Honestly, it all depends. I would say probably maybe. Like I would seriously consider it even if you're on an iPhone 13. That's how incredible this next jump is. Here's a couple reasons why. One is the 48 megapixels. If you're a serious content creator and you actually wanna be able to have your phone be capable of taking images like this wherever you go because occasionally this just isn't on you and the moment is just going so fast, then that's gonna be a game changer. If you wanna have an ultra wide lens, okay, that's cool. But the pro motion, like that is going to be amazing. The fact that you can literally run around and get stabilized footage now, you don't have to carry a GoPro on your shoot. You don't have to carry a DJI cam on your shoot. You can get that kind of footage just on the fly. I can't wait to see what different creators do with this because I think if you attach the iPhone onto something else, like maybe you just whip it around on a string, like you've maybe seen those GoPro videos for bullet time. Maybe we can do that with an iPhone now. <laughs> I don't know how wise that would be, but it has a ceramic shield, so we could get away with it. Having the crash detection and having emergency SOS, for me as someone who goes into the backcountry to take adventure photos, that's pretty cool. I don't have to carry another piece of gear. So for me, it's less about, okay, the iPhone is replacing my camera, but more about, okay, I have to carry less gear and I can have my camera with me all the time. Like those are the big game changers and that's why I'm personally gonna be upgrading. Having the 50 mil lens, that's really great. Having the 48 megapixel, the better color, better low light, all these things are going to really make a massive difference for me as a photographer in my workflow and just being able to get the same shot in less time. So when it comes down to it as a professional, that's where it's gonna make the big difference. 
if you are a just normal user, should you get the Pro phone or just the normal iPhone 14? I would definitely go for just the 14. Like unless you really need that 48 megapixels, most of us, most everyday users aren't going to notice enough of a difference that it's worth it. You're just not you're going to be perfectly happy with the 12 megapixel sensor. So I go with that one, save yourself some money. And then if you're the type of person who upgrades every year, well, maybe next year, the normal one has a 48 megapixel sensor. So I would hold on and I would just get the normal one. But if you're a pro level user, that's where if you're using all these features, it really does matter and really does add up. So I cannot wait for this phone. And that's not because I'm a tech nerd who just upgrades to every single thing. Like I've waited a couple of years. The other phones were good, but they were never like, whoa, this one is a whoa factor phone. It's kind of like when the M1 Max first came out and I was like, whoa, finally what I've been waiting for as a creator is here. And I think that applies to the iPhone. I would love to hear your opinion. Do you think that this phone is worth upgrading for? Or are you going to wait? Which model do you think fits you best? And which do you think is going to be best for creators? How are creators going to benefit from this in a way they haven't in phones in the past? Cool. Let me know your thoughts, favorite features, comments below. If this was helpful in some way or entertaining, hit that like button, subscribe. And if you want some free presets or Lightroom training, whatever, check out the links in the description below. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.